Hello, welcome to another Play Canvas tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to um, make your game objects interact with each other. So, we're going to look at two things rigid bodies and collision. So, firstly, um, a rigid body is something that allows your game objects, so your different objects like the boxes, spheres, um, other different shapes that you've made, characters. Um, so rigid bodies allow those different game objects to act under the control of physics. So um, a rigid body can make your objects move around um, in realistic ways and can also allow them to receive forces. So for an object to be influenced by um, gravity or act under added forces, it might be controlled by scripts or to just interact with other objects. So to um, bounce off other objects or um, hit other objects and then roll around. For, for an object to be able to do those things, it needs to have a rigid body, okay? And so with rigid bodies, there are different things, um, different properties that we can apply to them. So things like um, friction, so the resistance of an object um, when it um, moves over another object. Um, restitution as well, so the bounciness of an object, how much ob objects will bounce off each other, and things like the object's mass as well. So that's what a rigid body allows us to do. Um, it allows us to give an object based on their type of rigid bodies or colliders. So to start with, um, click Add Entity to add an object, and I'm going to add a box. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make this box a little bit bigger, so I'm going to um, change its scale to something like 50 by 50, okay, and I might just make it a little bit thicker, okay, so 50 for scale, for X scale, 10 for Y, and 50 for Z, there, okay, so I've got a box there, alright, might just give it a colour here, so I've already got a material that I can just drag on there, a green material, so now it's a green box, just to see it a bit more clearly so it stands out. Okay, um, I'm going to set the rotation, leave that at zero, um, position I'll leave it like that at the moment, um, but what I'm going to do now is add two things, so I can click on add component, All right, firstly I'll add collision, okay, and that comes up here, the collision component. Because this is a box shape, it should have a box collider. So I'm going to leave top type as box, but you can see there's other options there. Okay. And where it says half extents, this is something that you'll need to change um, straight away. So if you want um, collision to occur when an object hits the edges of this object, then you'll need to increase the half extent because I've increased the scale of this object. Um, so let's have a look here. We've got a scale 50, 10, and 50 for X, Y, and Z positions. So the half extents, in order for an object to collide as soon as it touches the outside of this shape, then the half extents needs to be half of these numbers up here. So X should be 25. Y, which is currently 0, 0,5, should be half of 10, so change that to 5. And Z should be 25 as well. So now we can see there's a white frame around this box. That's the collision, that's the collider. So it's kind of like a perimeter. So whenever an object touches this perimeter, it's collided with that object. And then you can have some sort of event happening, something happening in the game. So if I shrink that down again, so maybe I change 25 to 20, you can see that that white frame is now inside the shape. So the collision is actually, well, the collider is actually inside this green box, which means that if I have a collision detection, so I'm detecting whether an up, another object is hitting this object, um, if it, the object comes in from the left side and hits a, this shape, this green shape, it won't, the collision won't actually be detected until it hits this bit here. So it's actually going to go inside the shape a little bit. Okay, so I could also make it a bigger number, and that means that collision will occur before the shape is hit on either this side or this side. 
Okay, so you can change those numbers to um, influence where you want collision to occur, but it should just be the half the values of what you have for scale of the shape. Okay, we'll see how that works a little bit later on. All right, next thing I'm going to do is add a rigid body. So click Add Component and Rigid Body. And at the moment, I'm going to leave this to static. Okay, but there are some different settings I can change. So I can change the friction now. Okay, so um, the friction is the resistance an object encounters when moving over another. So I can increase that or decrease it. And restitution refers to how bouncy this object will be or um, how much bounce it will give off. So the lower the number, the less bouncy it is. The higher the number, the more bouncy it is. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm going to add another object. So I'm going to click on box again to add another box. And firstly, I'll just rename the first one to ground so we don't get confused. And this one I'm going to call just falling object because that's what it's going to do. All right. So on my falling object, I am going to um, change its position first. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to move it up above the ground. All right. I'm going to change its scale. So I'm going to make it four by four by four. Um, actually, I might make it a little bit bigger, six by six by six. There we go. I'm going to drag this pink material on so we can see it there a bit more clearly. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now I need to add those two things again. So add component and then collision and add component and rigid body. Okay, collision type should be box. Again, we need to change the half extent. So make it half of the scale values. So it'll be three by three by three. And the rigid body, I'm going to make static at first and we'll watch what happens. And then I'm going to change that in a minute. So with the camera, I'm just going to set up the camera so it can see everything in this scene. So I'll just move it back a bit and up a little bit. Okay. And now it should be able to see everything. So if I click on play or launch, it should be able to see all of that there. Excellent. All right. So this box is just hanging in the air. It's not actually falling yet. So what we can do to make this box or which is called falling object to make it fall, um, or to allow it to be bumped and move around by other objects that hit it, we can change the rigid body from static to dynamic and we can launch that again. And now it should fall. There we go. So it falls and then it bounces a couple of times. Now if we increase the bounce of the falling object by changing the restitution, so increasing that to make it a little bit more bouncy, then when it lands it should bounce higher and more often. There we go. Okay, so it bounced a little bit more, but we could increase that number and we could also increase the number on the, um, the restitution value for the ground as well. So we can increase both of those and now it should bounce quite a lot. And keep in mind, if both values for restitution are one, the highest values, then it's just going to bounce like nonstop. It'll just keep bouncing on and on and on. Okay, so there we go. Got a lot more bounce there. All right, so... That's restitution, that increases the bounciness of objects. All right, um, so now what will happen is um, we've changed the falling object from its rigid body type from uh, static to dynamic, which means that it can now kind of um, fall or move around when it's hit by other objects. Okay, there are other values there that we could change, like its mass, um, different ones that you can fiddle around with but that's that's basically um that's basically it the ground however it doesn't move it stays there and when it gets hit it doesn't um, really do anything either it doesn't um it doesn't get moved around in any way 
but um, what we could do is change just to see how the collision works we can change the half extents and make them bigger so maybe um, actually we'll just change the y value so increase the y value to 10 so now this pink um, cube here when it lands or when it falls it should actually it should actually hit this green ground this white line here so it should start interacting with it there so if we launch it again we should notice that the pink cube hits the green ground earlier on there we go okay and that's because we've changed its collision all right so we've made the we've increased the half extents which means that it's actually going to collide earlier on. And if we decrease the half extent, so it's actually inside the green object, then the pink cube should actually go inside the green um, box. So you can see it actually sinks into it a little bit before it starts bouncing. Okay, so that's that. If we wanted the um, pink one to fall through the green one, then we could just disable the rigid body. So I'll just increase that half extent back again. We could turn the rigid body off, launch it again. And it just falls straight through. Okay, because it no longer has a rigid body. It's there. We could delete it completely. The rigid body is there, but it's disabled at the moment. So um, it's not actually working. All right, um, what we can do now is you could go ahead and play around with the different settings there. Um, so see, change the restitution, change the friction, see how that works, um, change the type of um, collision. So we might just do that now. We could change the falling object collision. We could change that to a sphere. And we might actually put this on a bit of an angle and see what happens. There we go. All right, that's better. So I'll demonstrate that again. So now that this is on a bit of an angle and the pink box is actually set to have a sphere collider, you can actually see it kind of bounces and rolls off like a ball would. But if we change the um, pink one back to a box collision, then it should bounce in the way that a box would, not a sphere like that. Okay, so that's something that you can um, play around with, change the colliders and see how they work. So if you have a cube or a box and you give it a box collision, it's going to behave like a box. So it might fall over and then land flat or it might bounce a bit and then eventually land flat. But if you change it to a sphere collider, it's going to act, act like a sphere or a ball. So it's going to roll around um, like a ball would. Okay, so um, now what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of a script so that we can detect when collision actually occurs and um, do something. So we'll just change the rotation of that back to zero um, and might just put those values back to where they were roughly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in the asset panel here, I'm gonna click on add asset and then script and I'm going to create a new script called collider.js, hit enter. Okay, and I'll double click on this script. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make some space inside the initialize function. And I'm going to add one line of code to the initialize function. And this line of code is just basically going to set up the collision detection. So I'm going to put this dot Oops, this dot entity dot collision dot on and then in brackets put collision start and then after the quotation marks a comma this dot on collision start comma this and then end that line with a semicolon. Okay, so that's all in the initialize function. Then I'm going to add a new function. So you can leave the update function there, but I'm going to add a new one. 
okay? Um, and you can just add that down here. Okay, or actually we can get rid of the update function altogether. There we go. All right, so what we'll do is add this function here on collision, oops, on collision start. So I've gotten rid of the update function altogether. You don't need to do that, but I'm just replacing it with this function. So function result, and then we'll add our curly brackets. Okay, and inside this function, there's going to be an if statement. So if result dot other dot rigid body, and this basically means if another rigid body is colliding with this rigid body or the the rigid body that this script is attached to, or the object that this script is attached to, um, which contains a rigid body. If another object hits this other object, then we'll add some code. And you could have anything in here. So you can increase the score. Um, you could put a message on the screen. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to put this dot entity dot destroy. And what that will do is destroy or um, get rid of the um, the entity that's been hit. So it will just disappear from the scene altogether. So basically here in the initialize function, we are adding this line here to set up the collision detection. So we can be ready to use this function here. And then we create a function called on collision start. And inside these brackets here, we add result. And if result dot other rigid body, so if um, another rigid body is hitting this rigid body, then destroy this rigid body or this entity. Okay, so basically whatever object this script is attached to, if another object hits that object, then it, um, it will detect that and this object will be destroyed. So we can save that and then we can go and we could test it with the green box. So we could add component and then script there and we could drag that collider script on and now we can launch the game and so when this pink object hits the green one the green one should disappear because it's detected collision and there we go and when it detects collision from another object it's destroyed okay so we could get rid of that if we wanted to from the green one and put it onto the pink one so add component script and add the collider script. And so this time it should be the other way around. When the pink object um, hits the green one, the pink one will disappear. All right, there we go. So I've looked at a few things in this tutorial. First, we've looked at um, rigid bodies and how they worked. Then we looked at collision. We looked at different types of colliders that we can use, like the box and sphere collider. And now I've looked at collision detection with scripting. That's all for this tutorial. In the next few tutorials, we'll be looking at some more collision detection and triggers as well. So to detect when, um, not just when an object has collided with another object, to, but to detect if an object, um, if a, a triggers occurred. So if an object has maybe entered a, another object or entered a zone or specific area. Um, and we'll be starting to make a fully interactive game. Thanks for watching.